All right, let us begin. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Firenze, Italy. I'm here in the Tuscany region with the, oh, let me just grab this here. I didn't have this last year. The BCIT, Business and Media Faculty. This is the Italy field school that I taught last year. And I'm teaching again this year, so thank you BCIT and BCIT Global for choosing me as one of the instructors. I mentioned this last year, um, I am teaching just two courses. One is luxury brands and the other one is visual uh, storytelling and that's what I'm teaching the students. We have 23 students, same as last year. We're having a great time. We started in Rome and now we're in Florence. And last year I shot two videos here. I have this beautiful balcony, so might as well shoot here again. And I thought I would talk in this video mostly about the gear that I have. And I might shoot another video about bags and how I pack. But right now gear, as you saw, I started off with the SL2 and the uh, 16, well, I brought different lenses, but my main lens is the Sigma six, uh, 24 millimeter. F2 contemporary lens, which I love on the SL2 because, of course, this is a, a full frame 35mm sensor, but in APS-C mode, this 24 becomes a 36 equivalent. And that helicopter has been circling for a while, and I hope it's not making too much noise. Oddly enough, the Tour de France is starting in Florence today while I'm here. And I guess I'm ignorant, no, I guess I am ignorant because I thought the Tour de France always started in France, but it's starting in Florence, Italy this year. And so it's really busy and I'm assuming that's what the helicopter's for. So please ignore that sound. And uh, anyways, my main camera while going to Italy was the SL2 and the six, uh, 24 F2. I keep on saying 16 because that's APS-C. But as well, I have the, right here, the light lens lab, the helicoid adapter here. I wish they made this, this is made out of brass, I think. I wish they did have a black chrome version as well. Amazing, it allows for close focusing of M-mount lenses. So of course, I brought my beloved uh, 28 mm F2 Summicron V1 with the monster hood and the monster cap. I hope Thomas from Square Hood makes a uh, square hood version of this, make it more compact. And as well, a uh, long time uh, lens I've had for many years is the 40M Rorcore, and there is a Leica version of this. And so these two lenses with the adapter on the SL2 was great from Vancouver to Germany. I was in Munich, and then I took off to uh, Salzburg to work with Coop. So this is the Coop uh, Leica double rope strap, which works great on the SL2 or the SL series because it, it uses a slotted lugs. And so they call this webbing style. So it's kind of like a belt buckle. And so, uh, and then as well, the weight of this uh, evenly distributes along my neck. Now I do use the Peak Design anchors on my Wotan Craft straps as well, but I find that on the SL, uh, I just prefer something a little bit more robust. I think the coupe strap works out perfectly. But while I was in Germany, uh, Leica Germany also sent me two cameras that I can use throughout my trip in Germany, but as well as in Italy, which is the main part of the field school. Actually, just to talk about this bag here, this is the uh, seven liter pilot from Motencraft. I have two accessories attached. I have uh, a carabiner attached as well. This is my favorite travel bag for the past couple of years. Now, last year I had the khaki version. This year I have the black version. It's a little bit more incognito, just the right size for travel photography. So in here, I have camera number one. So I'll just put it down. And camera number two and I put the bag down on the floor. The first camera that I wanted to play with while in Italy was the Deluxe 8. And I was super interested in this camera because uh, I'm gonna do a separate video. Hopefully I can take this back to Canada. I enjoy using it. In fact, because the, the M series camera here is so different than this, it's nice to have these contrasting cameras, much like if you had a Q series and an M series. I think because they're so different, I think they complement each other. If I had an SL and a Q, and on the on the SL I had a 28, 24 equivalent, because a Q is closer to a 24 than it is a 28, um, I don't think I would want both of those, but having a Deluxe 8 light compact, uh, optical zoom lens, kind of point and shoot, so instead of using my smartphone, I'm using something like this, and then when I wanna just have fun shooting, then I would use, and what camera is this? This is the M. 11p and you could tell of course because it has the blacked out uh, little uh, rangefinder uh, adjustment uh, section here so in behind you that's how you adjust the rangefinder patch adjust the rangefinder alignment but they just put a little black 
dot there. And my buddy Pat Domingo said he only buys the P version. Um, biggest upgrade between this and the regular M11 to me is that um, CAI, it basically, it, it, it tags your images. I don't know what to call it, but it's gonna be down below here. I love it. It's not something I'm gonna be using right now today, but in the future, I always put my copyright and name information in any camera that I have, but knowing that it's basically baked into the DNG, and of course someone's gonna find a way of hacking it, just like people can hack into banks and, and other things. But in general, for the average person, it's very difficult to be able to bypass it. So being able to burn in the fact that I took these photos, I think it's great. And however this initiative uh, is gonna move forward, I think this is the future. And so I'm glad that the M11P has it, but as well it has uh, 256 uh, gigabyte internal memory versus 64 that's on the M11. And so instead of having a dual card slot, it already has 256 in here. And that's the basically the card size that it uses, 256. So I think having a 256 SD card and then internal 256, Perfect, I don't need dual card slot for something like this. And having internal is great because if you forget to put the card in, you're ready to rock the Casbah. And like the M11, you do have the USB-C uh, charging as well as being able to pull images off this camera here. So thank you so much uh, Leica for sending this to me. As well, they sent me the 35 uh, Simicron Apo the Apple chromatic lens. And if you notice how the focus tab works, so those of you that shoot Leica, you know, so this is infinity, right? So you push for infinity and then you pull for minimum, minimum focus. Now watch this. Usually it stops around here, right? Look at that, look at that. Look how far it goes. It goes to point, what is it here? I think it goes to point four. Where does it go to? It goes to point three. You can see that it goes to point three. So that's insane. Now you would have to use an EVF or the um, LCD screen uh, to be able to go past 0 0.7, so 70 centimeters. But you know, this something like this adapted to the SL2 would be great. And that's where the helicoid uh, right here from Light Lens Lab is awesome, is because it also allows for close focus. But um, being able to put it, do it on an M body, so a compact body, compact lens, everything manual focus, optical viewfinder. I've been having a lot of fun shooting the helicopter. Please stop. I'm gonna just ignore the helicopter. They must be following the bike riders here. Um, having the M11P with the 35 Apple, so this is pretty much the dream M setup, the most current digital M setup that I'm shooting with here. And this lens, I was able to test it back in Vetslar at the SL3 launch. Thank you, Pat, for loaning it to me uh, overnight. And even on a 24 megapixel sensor, you can definitely see how sharp, how clinically sharp uh, the, the the lens is. Now for a lot of people, it's, the difference isn't enough to make to spend this kind of money, but to me, uh, besides the sharpness, being able to have close focus is really, to me, worth more than the fact that this is an apochromatic lens. So having this, I've been having a great time, but as well as the Deluxe, sometimes you're just doing tourist shots, you're doing snapshots, and be able to punch in um, optically, be able to zoom in to images, and be able to take photos of you know, monuments and statues, it's great. So having both of these, I would typically have this in my bag and then have the the M11 around my neck or vice versa, depending on what I'm doing. So if I'm in low light situation, in a museum, no flash photography, uh, image stabilized, and then be able to optically zoom, this, this camera is probably the way to go. And then when I'm out in the streets doing street photography, lots of available light, I want, you know, bangers, if you want to call it that, but really high quality, high resolution images then a shoot with the M11P. And then having my 28 as well as my 40, uh, definitely the 40, the frame lines don't come up on the M11s or any of the digital Ms. And so you have to use the LCD or the EVF or just basically the 50 frame lines come up with this 40. And so all you got to do is uh, get a little bit more in the image. And so having these three cameras, having the SL2, having the M11P and having the Deluxe 8 has been kind of a, a, a dream situation. It's, it's so much of a dream that um, sometimes I just don't know what camera to use. And so uh, again, the reason why I brought this was because I didn't get the M11P and the Deluxe 8 until I got to Germany. I didn't get it till Thursday evening and I arrived in Germany on Sunday. So from Sunday till Thursday, imagine me having no camera. So I needed something. So the SL2 made the most sense because I could also shoot video with this. And so you might be wondering, well, what camera are you using now? Well, I'm using the DJI Osmo Pocket, Pocket Osmo. 
the, the number three version, the creator kit, uh, this isn't a sponsored video. DJ, I did not send this to me. Everyone has one. Thank you, Terry G from Revolver for loaning me his personal copy to shoot with this. So I am playing with this. I am, in fact, monitoring this all on my iPhone, which is a great thing. I actually do have the camera reversed so that I could see the screen. And I do have this on non-follow mode because I do want a locked off shot here. So I'm not really using it the way that I think most people would use it, but having this uh, built-in uh, receiver so you can just have one transmitter, use the audio, it's great actually for this kind of talking head video. And then to be able to easily monitor, start, stop, make all your adjustments on your iPhone. So it's great. So I'm actually, I have this iPhone down here. I'm monitoring what's happening over here. And so this is a great setup. And then the other camera I have is my Ricoh GR1 film camera. And so I decided to simplify again because I knew I would have the SL2, M11P, and the Deluxe 8. Imagine having an M7. So now my mind is just blown with how many options I have. So having the, the Ricoh GR1 so that when I need to shoot film, I have film. And typically I've been using film as like last uh, couple of years, other than if I had a very specific project like the Hong Kong Neon project, I just want to use film for fun, taking pictures of friends, taking pictures of family. And by that time, you can justify spending like whatever $2, $3 a shot, including scanning and developing and printing because, you know, if it's for family and friends, what's two or three dollars, right? And same reason why you would shoot with Instax, but you have the quality of 35 millimeters. So this is my film camera for this trip. And I have another accessory here that I've been using. Uh, this is the Hobolite Iris and I got this just before I left uh, Vancouver and I love Hobolite lights and I've been using them for the last little bit. Uh, this even has has different accessories. This one here, has this is the aperture uh, ring here so you can actually control the aperture. This looks like a camera and also has drop-in filters here and this filter has kind of like orange in the middle or red and green along the edge so you get these really cool other than just like an rgb light that just gives you one even light can you see that little bit of green on the edge and more of a purpley red in the middle so i use this as a night light and as a mood light so even when i'm eating this is kind of like the candle light and also you can do this you know you can actually use this at night you can drop the filter out color temperature and you could use this as a small so like i'm gonna do it 100 percent this is outdoors though and so obviously it has to be pretty close for it to work outdoors, but indoors when it's dark, this is more than enough for as a sort of an arm's length type of light. If you just wanna, you know, mold the light a little bit, comes with various filters, but I did an unboxing video, so I'll put the link down below, but this has been a pretty important tool for me and kind of a fun tool. Looks like a camera. It's as pretty as my digital cameras that I have with me here as well. So that's been important for me. And as well, um, Wotencraft shipped me to Germany to test out their new Cantiner bag. So this is a two liter. I did an Instagram stories or reels where I went and grabbed some lunch. And so this is quite small. Um, there's no bottom padding. This is basically meant for places where you know, you don't mind like your cell phone and things hanging out on the outside. And also the top does close up with a little pull like this. You can just pull it tight like this. And you can put this in another bag and use this more as an organizer. It does come with a strap. And so, and there's the, the khaki and the black version. So go, uh, I'll put the link down below to Wotan Craft. You can see how they've kind of, how, how much you can fill up, but for Italy, I don't want to use this to put my cell phone on the outside and anything valuable on the outside other than maybe within the hotel if I go downstairs for a morning breakfast or something like that. I don't mind using a bag like this, but out and about, um, you have to worry about pickpockets, which is kind of a big issue here in Europe. Um, but if I was in Asia, if I was in Taipei, if I was in, in Tokyo or Osaka, or even in Vancouver in general where there aren't a lot of people, I wouldn't hesitate to use this. So I am looking forward to testing this back in Vancouver, but I'll have links down below. Three, I think most people will prefer the 3.5 liter. Two liter, it's very small, but if you're doing something very specific, maybe even if you're in, in construction or the trades and you need kind of a bag that will hold some of your tools and some things that you want quick access, I actually think these bags would work out great. And so looking forward to this. Thank you, Rick and Albert, for sending these out to me. Two other bags that I use quite often is the um, the uh, reusable shopping bags. This is made out of Cordura. Of the smaller five liter size, they actually have a leather, the bottom, it's actually a leather insert. 
which is great. I don't think there's a leather insert on the new salt and pepper. Uh, that's a limited run anyways, but uh, I love both the khaki and the black, and I use this every day. I fold it like this, and it fits inside the seven liter pilot. So when I go shopping, and I need you know, to expand my, my carrying capacity, Dean will just whip this out instead of using a plastic bag, and it's sturdier and stronger. In the hotel, when I give my lectures, I actually put my MacBook Air, my iPad, and then maybe a little point and shoot, and a water bottle. It all fits inside something like this. But as well, I have the larger, I think this is 18 liters or 20 liters. Uh, I'll put, again, the links down below. But this I actually use for laundry. Or if I am, I know I'm going to be buying lots of things like grocery shopping. This also compacts down pretty small. I, it might just fit inside the 7 liter pilot, but I, I wouldn't. I just uh, would probably fit in a 10 liter pilot or something else. But even in Vancouver, I carry around this bag as well as this bag. So I, I think these are really useful when you are traveling. One more thing as well, um, mobile phone holders. This is the Wotencraft one. Uh, I don't think it's on their website yet, but any of their neck straps that use a peak design, basically what they do is they put the peak design uh, anchor system, just one of these in the middle, and then you just clip on your iPhone with a little tab that you put inside your case. So I've been having a great time using this, and it's just the right length where it's crossbody like this, and then when you need to use it, you can kind of use it like this quickly, or you just quickly unlock it. And that's why I like the Peak Design attachment. It's quick on, quick off, something like this. And so hopefully this will be on their website or just email uh, Wotan Craft if you want to order it. And I think you can order this um, sort of custom online. Pick your colors, pick your leathers, and they'll attach the little Peak Design along the bottom. So, so far my favorite camera while in Italy of course, it's going to be the M11P with the 35 Apple. My favorite lens is still going to be the 28. Uh, well, the, my, my favorite focal length, right? I love 28. So really, 28 is what I would normally be shooting. And so in terms of images, I'm not going to get as good photos with my 35 because I'm not used to it. But, you know, if someone sends you the 35 Apple, you're going to use it every time. So I have not even attached my 28 on the M11P. And so hopefully, um, I'm gonna ask Leica if I can take the Deluxe 8 as well as the uh, M11P back to Vancouver and do proper product photography, be able to do proper tests. Um, I think the 35 Apple has to go back. I was hoping to be able to test this up against the uh, 35 Apple Summicron SL, the L mount version, and sort of see the difference. I know a lot of people said that the, 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 the L mount version is gonna be a little bit cooler, but I want to actually look at the resolution and the rendering and see what the difference is between. So stay tuned if I can take this back with me, but I don't think so. But hopefully I could take back the M11P as well as the Deluxe 8 back to Vancouver. Oh, and also um, this is the uh, square hood, the small uh, uh, shutter release button. So this is the red one. It also has uh, chrome and I have the black one on the M11. So I think these work great on these cameras. It's just a nice look at that. And then look at this. Look how cool those uh, buttons look like. Oh, also, sorry, straps. This is their the official Leica um, uh, braided rope strap with the leather ends on here. So it works out great on the M11P. And this is uh, the dual tone strap here. But I also do have my Wotan Craft strap that I've been using. And, and so kind of going back and forth. And also you can see the dynamic range isn't so great. There may be a way for me to shoot in RAW and bring that back, but I don't want to play with that. I actually think using my iPhone for this kind of thing is better for like static talking head locked off shots. But remember, I can't monitor it unless I'm using the back, the front facing camera, which the quality isn't as good. But the versatility of having a pocket Osmo with a built in gimbal is better. But I just don't know if I'm going to be vlogging with this. I might just try a little bit of it. It's very humid today. It's I think over 30 degrees, but we're by the by the Adriatic Sea, so you get a nice sea breeze coming off. And I thought about vlogging, but Leica sent me two cameras. I have the um, Deluxe 8. As well. One last tool I forgot to mention are my watches. This is, of course, my G-Shock GMW B5000 TVB, Atomic 6 with solar, great travel watch, titanium, it's super light. And here is the uh, Veyer uh, they just came out with it. It's the new AmeriQuartz movement. So it's a quartz movement. But they do have an automatic version of this watch as well. And it's the 36 mil watch. So it's like the Explorer size, but with 20 mil lug width. So it has a wide stance. So I've been enjoying wearing this watch. But 
On the way here, of course, I have the Bulova uh, Oceanographer GMT, and this is a diver's version. Cool watch look at, nicknamed the Stormtrooper, but I don't like the gray strap that comes with it, so I just put a, a black Tropic strap on here. I think it looks way better. And so thank you so much for watching. Uh, hopefully I'll shoot another video while I'm here, maybe on my bags. Um, actually, you know what? Let's just um, show you just quickly here. So this is the two liter version. I'm going to stand up here. Because this is locked off, of course, it doesn't uh, follow me, but that's better because I don't want it to follow me. I want to... This is the two liter version here. And I haven't put the strap on the, the, the 3.5 here, but this is the 3.5 liter. So there you go. All right. And so thank you so much for watching. We'll talk to you soon and happy shooting. Peace.